All right, guys, um, welcome back. Um, I know I said in the last online video that this is going to be lecture two, part one. In fact, I've just got, you know, that's gone. This is no lecture three. There's no part two. This is this is the next bit. OK, so this is lecture three. And I want to talk before we go on and do anything else further. I just want to talk a little bit about um, abstraction of multiplication of matrix multiplication. So we've been look, looking at, for instance, multiplying um, matrices like this, two, one, one, one by minus one one for example when you do that you're going to get another you're going to get a column vector so it's two by minus one plus one by one and here then it's one by minus one plus one by one and what you get then is you get minus, two by minus one plus one is minus one and you get zero here boom boom and that's what you do that's fine that's great so but all the same rules apply if instead of numbers you have variables or constants, depending on what the letter stands for. So basically what I'm talking about here now is if I replace um, the symbols within the, um, the square brackets by, by, by symbols instead of numbers, you do exactly the same. Now, I know students don't like this, that you find this is um, a lot more difficult, but it's not. It's exactly the same. So let me just, just, just show you. Suppose I have A, B, C, D multiplied by B and F. For example, suppose I ask you to multiply that out in an exam situation. So what you do is you do exactly the same. So you're going to multiply each row by the second by the, the, the column here, EF. So what you're going to get in the first one here is A by E plus B by F. OK, and the second entry in the column product is going to be C by E plus D by F. So do not be phased in an exam situation or in an analysis situation when you, uh, in an in the analysis situation further on when you you look at this stuff when you're looking at engineering systems when you see instead of numbers you see symbols it's exactly the same the same rules apply okay and then you could have a mixture for instance suppose I have um, just for instance um, a one zero zero one a a one zero and i'm multiplying that by zero zero one okay so here now you've got a mixture of symbols these are all a's and you're multiplying these together so i'm going to i've got three by three matrix here i've got a three by one here so i'm going to get a three by one again at the end okay so what it is it's a by zero plus one by zero plus zero by one that's the first entry so you're multiplying the first row by the column matrix the second one then is zero by zero plus one by zero plus a by one. And the last one then is a by zero plus one by zero plus one by zero. So what you end up with then in this case is zero a zero. Okay. And again, if you want to, you can bring the a outside, but you don't have to do that. Okay. So do not be phased by this because that's, um, it is an important little um, application of matrices. You will typically see this kind of um, this kind of this kind of operations in place when you start looking at engineering systems and people start looking at um, the analysis of engineering systems. And it sometimes um, analyze engineering systems using matrices. And usually the matrices have symbols like this. Do not be faced by this. It's all exactly the same. Same rules. There's also some notation that I want you to talk to you about because that's this, it's, it's also important. Um, Suppose um, I have a matrix A. This is just stupid notation of folks, and there's nothing, there's no mathematics here. Suppose it's 0, 1, 1, minus 2, 2, 1, and minus 1, 3, and 7. Okay? So um, each of these symbols here within the matrix has its own um, identifier. Okay? So the first number here in the top right, on top left corner, because the matrix here is called is called capital A, we call the number zero there. Um, and that, an abstract definition or an abstract notation for it is A11. So the first number here, first the row in which the number is, and the second number refers to the column in which it is. So A11 says I'm in the first row and the first column. So A11 is zero. A12 is one. And A13 is 1. Okay, so this is just, again, stupid notation. 
So if I just want to um, uh, identify picker, so so for instance, if I want A23, what's the A23? A23 is the number in the, is the entry in the second row and third column, which in this case is one. And if I want A23, oh, A32, sorry, this is the entry in the third row and in the second column, and that's three. So again, now this is when I first started doing this, messing about with this so many years ago. This is the stuff that kind of I, I, I didn't like, this uh, way of identifying individual elements. And it's very, very important that you do this or be able to do this in certain situations. Okay, so um, so that, that's an important little notation device. So for example, let's do another example. Now, I could ask you this, or maybe I, I won't, but I could. Suppose I give you a matrix this. And then I could ask you, what is B12? So B12 is the entry in the first row and the second column, and it's seven. And if I ask you for B21, that's the second row, first column, and that's eight. So this is just a simple way, or this is just the traditional way of identifying individual entries in the matrix. And again, it's just a case, it's, again, it's just stupid notation. We use the lowercase letter for individual elements of the matrix, which is identified by a capital letter. So if this matrix here is capital B, all the individual entries are lowercase b with a number, uh, a subscript, two subscripts. And that's just the convention. There's no mathematics involved here, folks. This is just pure notation. That's all this is. But it's an important little, uh, some, it's important that you get used to it. Okay, so this is, uh, that's just, uh, as I say, some stupid notation. Um, uh, oh yes, before I forget, boys and girls, let me just put this in. Um, I'm following pretty much the, the, this book. Um, I'm going through uh, pretty much what's in this book. And I think it's not a bad book actually. And certainly the exercises or the problems that I'm setting you are taken from this book. And it's actually not a bad book. So if you have it and if you have the money to get it, then get it, get it from Amazon. Well, you know, before they run out because everything is running out these days apparently. Um, so just get this uh, if you can. Um, I will be using it as a reference next year as well. So it is a nice little book and it's got most of what we do in the first two years. And it's a very nice reference book and it's got nice worked examples. And that's really important now because if you're working at home um, and you, you, you're, you're, you, know, you, you are working at home and you want to see some worked examples, there are some lots of worked examples in this book. Um, as there are another engineering maths books, but if now that we're kind of in lockdown mode here, and you can get your hands in this book, I would advise you to do it and actually read through it because instead of listening to my stupid voice, you can actually maybe read this in your own voice, which sounds a lot better. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's another thing. Okay, now there are some special square matrices. And this notation or these special matrices are only square. So. I love the word special. Now it's very important when I, uh, oh, that's not how you spell matrices. Is it IES? No, MRI. I can't spell it. I've lost it. I can't, I can't spell it. Um, and I've, I've come, up, come up a blank. I'm, I'm, I'm getting Alzheimer's right in front of you. Um, so I, I don't know how you spell matrices anymore. And I see, yes. Oh, is that right? Maybe I recovered. Maybe I didn't. All right, this is, we're going to put, we're going to press on. All right. Now, when I first started doing this, folks, I I was oh, this was used to confuse me. These kind of special matrices, like why are they really? They're all square. That's the important um, identifier here. They, you must have a square matrix before you have all these other special things happening to them. So if so, basically, if a matrix is not square, it's not special, or it's not special at all. These are very special square matrices. Square matrices in themselves are special. These are special, special square matrices. Okay, so um, it's very, very important that you uh, get happy with this again. This is just stupid terminology, stupid notation. Okay, so the first important um, uh, uh, matrix that we're going to be talking about here is, um, sorry, I'm just looking through the book here so to make sure that I uh, get them all. Right. Um, we talked about square matrices, same number of rows and columns. Now, the most important, I suppose, 
square matrix is what's called the identity square matrix. And the identity square matrix Because it's so important, it has its own notation, and it's called capital I. All right? Now, it's a square matrix. What capital I represents depends on the context. If you're dealing with two by two square matrices, oh, I can't spell matrices, am I? Okay. If you're talking about two by two matrices, I is this. It's one here, one here, zero here, zero here, and that's it. So if you look at it, this is what's called a sparse matrix because there's not many entries in it, but that's that you don't care about that. What's very important is this particular structure. This is really important. So if you're dealing with square or two by two matrices and you see the, the letter capital I, you know from its context, from the context in which you're dealing, that it's one, zero, zero, one. If you're talking about three by three matrices, and I'm not going to spell matrices anymore, I is one, 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 zero, 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 zero. So if you're dealing with three by three matrices, then, and you see the letter capital I, what it means is this. So what capital I means depends on the context. And that's important. If you've got a four by four matrix, which you never do because it's just too big and unwieldy, but a four by four I is this one, zero, one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero I. But this identity matrix, it's by definition, is going to be a square matrix. This identity matrix is really important and it's very important that you get this into your brains, what capital I is. So it's what's this, these two numbers here, the numbers from um, top left to bottom right, these are called, this, these, the numbers along this, these thing, this is called the, what's called the main diagonal in matrix, in matrix land, okay? So in, for, for a two by two matrix, you have two numbers in the main diagonal and the, two, the, they're the number one, so it's one and one. For three by three matrices, this is the main diagonal here. Again, you only have a main diagonal for a square matrix. It's top left to bottom right. And in this case, the main diagonal is one, one, one. For a four by four matrices, for by four by four, I can't say anything anymore, I'm just too damn tired. If you have a four by four identity, the main diagonal is just all ones. So it's one, 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 one. Okay, so this is very important. So again, this idea of a main diagonal is important and the notation for the identity matrix is very important. Okay, now if you want to, uh, um, generalize the idea of an identity matrix, what you then get is what's called a diagonal matrix. And a diagonal matrix is a square matrix, because everything is square, is a square matrix, matrix whose entries of the main diagonal are zero. Okay, so here's what, so here's a two by two matrix. Here's a two, a two by two diagonal. So it's A, B, zero, zero. Okay, because this is the main diagonal. The two numbers off the main diagonal are zero. So this is called a diagonal matrix. When you start doing engineering analysis, and I do this sometimes, I do this myself all the time in my own crappy corner of the research world, which nobody reads. Um, diagonal matrices are very, very important because they characterize a special type of system that I'm interested in and it makes the mathematics a lot easier, but you don't care. Nobody else does either, so don't, don't worry. If you've got a three by three, diagonal matrix, what you have here is A, B, C, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, A, B, and C can be anything. It can be a number, it can be a symbol, it could be your favorite animal, whatever it is. But the important thing here, guys, is off the main diagonal, all the entries are zero. So again, now for a three by three matrix, this is the main diagonal. Off the main diagonal, all the ent entries are zero, so you have a diagonal matrix. And as I say, a lot of engineering analysis consists of taking a non-diagonal matrix, a crappy two by two or three by three or four by four, and reducing it to a diagonal matrix because it makes the mathematics a lot easier. Okay, so that's a, a so that's that's a that's, they're they're two very very important matrices. So you talked about identity, you talked about a diagonal matrix. Next type of matrix that I want to talk about. Next type of uh, um, um, oh yes and. One very important property, and I forgot this, 
and because this is the first time, so you need to cut me some slack here about, about doing this online. And um, what's very, very important, folks, it, uh, very important property of the identity matrix is if A is any square matrix, my confidence is shot, I can't even spell matrix anymore. If A is any square matrix, you've got A by I, where I is the identity, depending on the size of what A is, is I by A is equal to A. And that is so important. So if you multiply square matrix by the identity matrix, you just get the square matrix. And you're thinking, oh, this, is that so important? It is actually, that, that's an important idea, okay? So if you have any square matrix and you multiply it by its corresponding identity, you just get back to the square matrix. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about, and this look is going to sound very bizarre, but it's, it's, this is very important as well, bizarrely, is the idea of a transpose of a matrix. So this is taking a matrix and reorganizing the matrix in a special way. So let me just do it by means of example. Okay. So here's, a, here's what's called transpose. I think I spelled that right. So if A is 2, 1, 5, minus 6. Okay. The transpose of a matrix is you take the rows and you convert them into columns. So the first row becomes the first column, the second row becomes the second column, the third row becomes the third column, etc., etc., etc. So um, you can do this for non-square matrices, but don't. We're not going to do that. So I'm going to, we're going to focus this on, on square matrices. So if I want the transpose of A, it's got its own notation. It's capital A, because this is the matrix A, and it's capital T. It's a superscript capital T. So the capital T goes on the top right corner of A. Again, there's no reason why this is the case or why this is the right notation. This is just the traditional notation for this. So A transpose becomes this. You get 2, 1, because that's the first row. So the first row is switched around, so you get the, the, the first column. 5 and 6 becomes that. OK? Now, another way to think about this, actually, you will notice that the main diagonal here is unchanged, right? So like the two minus six here, so the two main diagonals are the same, right? So the two main diagonals are the same. Now, what happens is that the, the off diagonal numbers are switched. That's basically it. And that's another way to do it. And probably maybe may a more efficient way to do it. Okay, so let's, 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 um, let's look at another one. If I have though that um, B is A zero C D, and I want B transpose, here's what you get, folks. A and D are stay the same, and you switch the two elements, C comes up here, and zero comes here. All right, it becomes a little bit harder when you're talking about uh, and maybe three by three and four by four. Now, so let me just, let's just do an example. Suppose capital C is this. Okay, suppose capital C is that matrix there, it's a three by three matrix, and we want to get its transpose. Now, when is it when it's a three by three matrix? I just prefer to do this. I, I prefer well. You can you, you can do this in two ways. Um, I prefer I don't know why to just make the rows columns. So the first row becomes the first column. So you get one zero zero. The second row becomes the second column. So minus five six seven, and the third row becomes the third column. So I get one one two. Now again, though you could do it the other way. You could, what you could do is you can write down the main diagonal elements because you know they're the same. So you get one, six, two, and then you start switching um, the elements on the opposite side of the main diagonal. So here, if you look at this, I'm going to swap the zero and minus five here. So I'm going to get minus five over here and get zero here. I'm going to swap the zero and the one because they are mirror images. I hope you can see that. So the zero and the one, they're kind of mirror images around the main diagonal. So I switch those, so I get one here and zero here. And finally, then I switch the seven and the one because they're the uh, mirror images on the main diagonal. So I get seven here and one here. So you get the same result. You have to get the same result, but it's just a different way of doing it. So you have a choice of doing it, okay? Now, there's a special type of um, um, square matrix or, or a special type of, of yes, yeah, special type of square matrix. And this is called a symmetric matrix. So there's a lot of crap going on here, a lot of notation, a lot of terminology.
Now this must be square. You know, now as I say, all these special matrices have to be square. So just, we're always talking about square matrices here. So a symmetric matrix is a matrix equal to its transpose. Okay. So if you take the transpose of matrix A and you find uh, uh, it's, equal, it is, it's equal to A, the matrix is set to be symmetric. And there's another one, just to confuse you further, what's called the skew symmetric. And that is um, if the matrix A is equal to minus A transpose. And symmetric uh, symmetric matrices in particular, but also skew symmetric skew schemat I can't say it skew symmetric matrices are very important in engineering analysis. Again, this is just bizarre, and there's no reason you know it's no obvious reason why they should be important, but they are very important. Again, in my own little research corner of the world, this happens all the time. I'm always looking for symmetric matrices, and I'm all sometimes I'm looking for skew symmetric matrices, skew symmetric matrices, just to make the analysis simpler. Okay, but it's very, very easy now. Unfortunately, you have to cram this into your brains. What a symmetric matrix is. If a symmetric matrix A, I'm sorry, a square matrix A is symmetric if A is equal to A transpose. A skew symmetric if A is equal to minus A transpose. So let's look at some examples. So we've got a matrix A here. And it's 5 minus 4, 2. This is minus 4, 6, 9. And this is 2, 9, 13. Okay? Now, if you get the transpose of this, Now you can do, as I say, you can just write down the main diagonal and say, they're always going to be the same, all right? The main diagonal are going to be the same. Now, if you look at this case now here, the minus, uh, I'm going to take, let's take the first row and write it as the, for, as the first column. So I get minus four, two. I take the second row and it becomes the second column. So it's minus four, six, nine. And so here I get two, nine, 13. And you will see that A and A transpose are identical. All the elements are the same. So each entry is the same. So five is equal to five, minus four is equal to minus four, two is equal to two. And you get this, um, so therefore, A is equal to A transpose, and therefore, A is symmetric. Now, boys and girls, I just realized I missed out a very, very important little um, um, idea in matrix land. And I, sh I should have said this right at the beginning. Um, and I, I, I just realized now that, and again, you have to forgive me because this is my first time. Come on, you can cut me some slack. This is the first time everyone's going through this virus crap. So um, it's uh, it's difficult for us all, believe me. So uh, I, I just want to do one one last thing. And this is to do with equals, uh, actually equals. So if you've got two matrices and you're saying that A is equal to B, the equal sign in this case has two meanings, or it has, it has to fulfill two properties before two matrices are the same. If two matrices are the same, the first thing you must have is you must have the same dimension. That's the first thing. Okay, and if they have the same dimension, All the entries are the same. So A11 is equal to B11, A12 is equal to B12, etc. I remember now what A12 and B12 mean. A12 means the entry in the first row, second column for A, for capital A, and B12 is the entry in the first row and second column for the matrix capital B. So when two matrices are equal, they have the same dimension, and all the individual entries must be identical, must be exactly the same. So if you go back here now to this situation here, that's what's happening. A and A transpose have the same dimension because they're two square matrices, two, two three by three matrices, and each individual entry is the same. So that's the reason why we can say that A is equal to A transpose. This equals sign, folks, is really important in mathematics. Without an equals, you don't have mathematics. And so what equals means in mathematics is that 
The thing on the left is the same as the thing on the right, even though they're written in different ways sometimes. Okay, two equal to two, they're not written the same way. But two equals one plus one means that one plus one is the same as two, but it's written in a different way. Okay, so I'm going to post up the second set of exercises for you to do now. Work through them, right? Now, I think in this case, there are uh, nine problems. Work through these babies because you're, you're not doing anything else all day. Get off Netflix and just get on and do these problems and work through them because if you do, you pass your exams and you go into second year and you get me back again in your lives. Re and, and there's no virtual jury. It's real life jury. You know, come on. Who, who, that's, that's, the, that's amazing. And so um, get off Netflix, get off your phones, do exercises too. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye.